Hello guys, this is Hamlet from 59 Gaming and today I would like to introduce a short series for you. In the course of the next few days we will show you our tier list for Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle and in this video we will kick things off with the alas that came out in 2020 regardless of the version and for that I brought the King of Global and the King of JP Doka on board. Say hello to the truth and the homie Koresh. Hey guys, what's going on? hi -o. We're here to talk about the BEST UNITS IN THE GAME! My favorite. That's right, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Tekken Ultimate Gohan. <laughs> <laughs> He's missing from the list. <laughs> yeah, he should be an LR. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I may have him. Like, you know, if he was eligible, maybe I could slot him in there in the top 10 somewhere. All right, let's, let's not get crazy. <laughs> let's kick things off with number 10, Tech Vegito. So, uh, Goresh, why don't you pick this one and comment on that? Yeah, you know, it's kind of funny with this guy because back when this guy came out, I think it was pretty unanimous that he was probably like the best unit in the game alongside the Gogeta that came out along with him. And so him being at number 10 is kind of like, wow. Like if you if you saw this list at the beginning of the year, like when these guys first released, and you're like 10, like they're going to release nine better units in this guy. Um, and honestly, it's kind of crazy to think about it that way. But I mean, this guy is really, really interesting. He, um, he has a unique play style, I feel like, prior to transformation because he does have that special thing in the third slot, which honestly, I, I actually do like the design because it's something that not a lot of, uh, uh, not a lot of other units have access to. You know, uh, whether or not you want to uh, utilize the dodge chance or you want to have him, uh, you know, perform the additional attack in slots one and two post-transformation. Um, he has his uses in Super Battle Road, but I feel like his placement at number 10 really is determined on the fact that his defense utility, defensive utility is not really that good um, in those first few turns that he's, you know, not transformed. I feel like that plays a huge part in his placement at number 10, and that's why he's not really much more higher up on the list right, than that. I would also add to that, I think that, like, Vegito the first couple of turns, the damage he's doing is just nowhere near what all the other units on this list can do, like, right away. Yeah, That's big yeah. again, I think, uh, at least when I was making my list, a big factor was, you know, how good do they perform in the Super Battle Road events, because Extreme Super Battle Road is easily the toughest event in the game at this point. Yeah. So when you're considering who the best units in the game are, you have to consider the hardest event in the game, right? Yep. Uh, that's gonna, you know, at, that's gonna be like the the most weighted, uh, I guess, way to d differentiate between who's better than the other units in the list. So his performance in there is really gonna determine where he's placed in the list. And you know, he's not bad in there because of that. You know, like I said, you can float him off, and he has that high chance to dodge. But when you compare him to the other units we're about to talk about after this, I feel like you know they're a step above. It's pretty obvious. Okay, yeah, I feel absolutely the same about him. Um, funnily enough, this guy was on number 10 uh, on all of our lists, but you will see that right at the end. But um, yeah, I just want to reveal that to you right now. So, um, yeah, I guess you, you uh, listen closely to Goresh, so I think you can assume who is at number 9. Um, I will take this one, STR Gogeta. Yeah, the, the kits are basically the same, but there is one major difference. So when Gogeta is transformed, he is super effective against all types in slot 1 and 2. And that gives him that gives him a little bit the edge on Vegito in my from my point of view when he is rainbowed. So he has a pretty high chance to launch an additional super attack. And yeah, when you're super effective against all types and you know how high his attack set can be. Um, <laughs> you saw that uh, showcase from, from, from Truth. He can get like five, six million attacks and very long events. And when you're super effective against all types, man, this this guy is doing work. Um, but yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Truth. Yeah, because I would say like it's very rare, but like like fully built up Tech Vegito Blue versus fully built up Gogeta Blue. Vegito can be slowed up occasionally by like an in goku like in the legendary goku event mm -hmm, and gogeta mm -hmm. just tears his ass in half right like that's but but it's it, it, it's it's not too common but i would agree with that right yep. i found that vegeto is a little bit better defensively but even there they are still relatively close whereas again vegeto can be stonewalled but gogeta does not <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i not. feel like that's the deciding factor and maybe us placing him a little bit higher. The other thing to note with Vegito is I do kind of like Vegito's leader skill slightly better. I think Patara, even with Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta out, I think Patara still is a little bit better than uh, uh, Fusion now that we have the uh, STR Goku and Vegeta out as well. 
Oh, yeah, but, I, I would say it's not even cool. Like, Patara's way, head and shoulders better than Fusion. Yeah, yeah but... Uh, yeah, I think the Gogeta is effective against all types. And then also paired with the fact that he gets the additional normal that is able to proc the additional from the potential system, like that's going to factor in a lot higher when we're considering uh, these units at rainbow as well. Yeah. And something, and the last thing I wanted to quickly mention about both these guys is that they have an active skill, but it's super rare to see it. So I don't really, um, you know, it's, it's obviously extremely powerful when you can see it, but it's not, you know, outside of those long, super mega long events, you're not really going to see it ever activate. So. And yeah, one more thing. Um, well, I think in the end for you guys uh, out there in the comment section of YouTube, those guys are so close together. Um, I don't mind if you guys say like Gogeta's number 10 and Vegeta's number 9. They are so close. Uh, it comes down to personal preference. But uh, for me anyway, uh, Gogeta has slightly the edge here uh, over Vegito. So um, yeah, Gogeta yeah. coming in at number 9. <laughs> Okay, number eight. Yeah, it it, uh, it pains me so much. I cannot comment on this unit at all. Let's talk about LR Blue Goku and Vegeta Truth. Um, you have him rainbowed. Um, why don't you pick this one? So this unit to me, like, if we look at all the units on this list and like their potential, like it's like you think of like, you know, like what like SCR Vegito could do with like a perfect turn and he gets like a million crit counters and stuff like that. I think this Goku and Vegeta is up there in terms of like their full potential of being like the most impressive unit that you can see. The problem is that I found it to be pretty difficult without like really sort of like changing your team in a certain way to get this unit at full power to where they are just absolutely unbelievable, right? Um, I would say that in Super Battle Road though, like they are going to look super impressive, right? Because they're greatly raising their defense on super and lowering enemy attack at the same time, which is a really, really powerful combo, especially for Super Battle Road. But the fact that a lot of their kit is based upon how many rainbow orbs they're getting, and there just is a very small amount of rainbow orb changers in the game and on these teams that this Goku and Vegeta are on, it's like, it, it, it's like a quirky design again. Like when the LR AGL Gohan came out, and like they created the Android 16 to help him out, but then the Android 16 is like on none of his teams and just can't even interact with him whatsoever. It's almost a similar thing with me where I see how they made this Krillin. And I just wonder why that Krillin was not a rainbow orb changer to really build out their full power of getting the additional attacks with rainbow mm -hmm. orbs and all the extra key. Because like, again, when they're, you get the, the three rainbow orbs, so they're doing three additional normals and then you get the, the hidden potential system super at the end and you've built them up with full crits, and they're just like critting all over. It's like, they're ridiculous, but it's they're a little bit inconsistent is what I've found. Yeah, and one thing I'll add to that is that, again, they have an active skill. Much, much easier to get their active skill than the blue fusions that we just talked about. But with them specifically, because their active skill has a drawback, I think it's what, minus 50% defense for one turn, which is factored yeah. after the start of turn is already in effect. So it's literally just, like it's like the B pan effect, but it's negative <laughs> for you, right? Um, so I think it, what's weird about that is there's instances where you're going to get the active skill, but you'd actually rather not use the active skill because you don't want to just die, right? You're going to do a ton more damage with that active, but your defense takes a massive hit with that actually uh, active. So uh, the, the condition is, I think it's 50% health or lower to activate that, yeah. which is honestly not that hard to do. Um, but I think it's hard enough to get it to where if you get the active skill active in a fight, you're probably only going to be able to use it once, and that's your only good, that's going to be your only opportunity to get it off. So if you choose to not activate it because of the drawback, that's basically you're, you're basically just losing out that turn because you're not going to be able to get that again, most likely for the rest of that fight. So I feel like what they should have done instead of having it be the way that it is right now is have the same conditions, but maybe lower the amount of defense it takes away, or maybe just have that not a part of the active skill at all, but then reduce the amount of damage you're getting from it. Because I don't think the drawback is too much, but it makes you hesitant to use the active skill when you would want to use it anyway, which I feel like is just inherently like contradictory to what the unit is supposed to be doing. So. Yeah. One thing I will say is I, too often, Dokkan is obsessed with not one type of restriction, but two and three and on and on and on. At least for Goku and Vegeta, it's literally just health. Below 50%, you're good. No turn, no, you know, units you have to fight, no allies, nothing like that. So that is good, even if there is that drawback, right? Right. 
All right. So, uh, yeah, as I said, I, unfortunately, I don't have this unit. I, I plan to buy them with coins when they come back for saying they probably. Um, the way the reason why I place them on the list uh, is because I watched the footage from Goresh and Truth and uh, I absolutely agree with them. But I can't wait to get my hands on them because I think they're amazing. So yeah. let's move on with the tier list. The next one on this list is the latest at all that just released LR Super Saiyan 2 Gohan. And yeah, I will take this one. He's very fun to use. In my opinion, he is a mix between the uh, AGL LR Gohan and the um, Int OG LR Gohan. I guess you could say that. And yeah, he has some, some Angel Vegeta uh, <laughs> built into him as well. He's a very fast, very fun unit. He gets a lot of key uh, when you when you click the orbs. Um, he gets his ultra super uh, attack or very easily. He, he gets high numbers, man. It's so easy to get a five, uh, four or five million attack set pre actor skill. Um, he has a 25% chance of doing an additional super attack, I believe. So his his potential is is crazy, but. The yeah. reason why he's just at number seven for me um, is that he can be a little bit fragile depending on your on your luck or how unlucky you are in terms of the orbs. Uh, he's a yeah. second slot unit and it's it's not a big deal, but it annoys me personally. He has shattering the limit instead of fierce battle. Um, I have. Yeah, I, and I think yeah. that. Yep. I was gonna say I think that plays into a bigger problem as well as his links aren't really that good. Um, you know, shutting the limit, gaze of respect, those sorts of links, like they're not horrible, but you're not going to be able to get them active. Like, when are you ever going to get gaze of respect active with this unit? Yeah. Never. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I really did not like that that choice. There was no, I felt like there was no reason for that, right? Like, just give him shocking speed, like the in LR has, and we're good to go. You yeah. know, especially because, like, with gaze of respect, they're almost asking you to use him with a piccolo. Piccolos usually have shocking speed. Like, I, it's just, it's just an odd design choice, right? Like, yeah, and then. This isn't necessarily a negative, but it's a weird sort of con like self-contradictory design choice, which is the concept of having like a nuker style unit also require, um, well, nuker style unit in terms of attack and defense gain per orb, but then also get the key plus one in addition for every key sphere obtained because it's the game is basically telling you, hey, you don't need that many keys, that many key spheres to get a super off. So don't worry about it and get this many key spheres and then save the rest of your other team members. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, they're like, well, you kind of do want a lot because then you're going to get more stats. So in that in that regard, like you don't, I've when I've used this unit, I've found myself not really giving him that many key spheres because I want to save them for my other units on the team. Mm. But then you're kind of like, oh damn, I really wish I gave it to this guy because then he'd be hitting some, he'd be hitting a lot harder, he'd be tanking better. So that like those two conditions or those two effects in his passive at the same time are sort of contradictory. Um, I would say too, as far as he goes defensively, I think he's very fine defensively, considering the ease that the damage he's able to do with the, you know, the extra key per orb, which is like one of the most strongest mechanics in the game. Yeah. Um, obviously, he has the huge annoyance of the crazy like last part of his passive and active skill where he's doing ridiculous damage, but they couldn't have made it any more difficult, right? Because they gave him an HP restriction under 58% or less. They gave him a character restriction where you have to have a movie hero Goku on the team. And there's also a turn restriction, which is just very annoying. The other thing too that does suck is that it makes sense why Kid Goku is excluded from that, obviously. But I mean, Kid Goku and Arale work really good with this Gohan because oh, yes. they're creating mm -hmm. Rainbow Orb, right? So. Yeah, I think I, I agree that the condition is way too strict, but at, on the bright side, I will say that the active skill condition being the same as like the second part of the passive, I think is actually pretty good design because if you're going to get one, then you might as well get the other one. Um, and I feel like uh, the fact that you don't necessarily need to have the Goku on the same rotation as you, rather he can just be on the other rotation, like doing his own thing. I feel like that's decent as well because like on my uh, showcase room at 55%, I think I ran the uh, Bond of Master and Disciple team. And I had the Gohan alongside whatever unit he was paired up with. And then the other rotation was the Resurrection F, uh, Blue Goku and Vegeta rotation. And that counted because that Goku is a movie hero Goku. Yeah. So that rotation works well on like the other, you know, the other rotation besides the Gohan. But Gohan's still getting that, uh, you know, the active skill condition as well as the passive condition fulfilled because of that. So I feel like that's, you know, uh, something that people don't necessarily consider because 
whenever you see like these strict conditions, it's, you're always thinking, oh, you have to use them in the same rotation, but not not in this case. Okay, so yeah, let's move on to number six. Yeah, and I, I saved this one for Goresh because I know he, he really likes him. Uh, number six, Spirit Bomb Goku. Yeah, so technically this guy did release on Global in 2020, which is why he's on this list. I know some people are going to comment about that, so I'm just going to say that right now. Um, the thing I really like about this unit is that there's not a single part of him that's bad. Like, his leader skill is very good. His super attack effects are very good. His passive is very good. Categories are very good, and links are very good. So, like, he literally doesn't have a weakness. Um, I guess technically, other than the fact that he's not, like, the greatest tank ever. Um, but again, I think the major factor that we most of us considered when making this list is, uh, you know, the harder modes like Super Battle Road, where stuff like ceiling and lowering attack definitely plays a major factor. <laughs> and then in addition to that as well, his key sphere, uh, I think he changes a random type to rainbow, which, you know, it's always going to be relevant because we just mentioned earlier how, you know, there aren't that many rainbow orb changes in the game. Um, and when you have a unit as powerful as this guy, being able to fulfill both the floating the floating role and the main rotation role on like a lot of different teams, like that's insanely powerful. Um, I mean, yeah, this guy has to, he's probably the strongest Rainbow Orb Changer in the game, right? Oh, 100%. For sure, yeah. 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 There's no one else. Yep. I mean, I guess technically if you want to count Beerus, but this guy's better than him. Yeah. Um, but I and mean, Beerus the, has the restriction too, where this guy yeah, just always. Yeah, right. The one thing I will add to is I feel like this concept of him, cre like he, he is one of the only units in the game that like makes other units support units. Like his passive makes Super Saiyan category allies support units for his passive because he gets an additional attack plus 7% per Super Saiyan category ally per orb obtained. Um, he, he's not, it's not like he's doing bad damage without that portion active either. Like if you have him on a rotation without any other Super Saiyan category allies, he's still doing a lot of damage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. The fact that you can have two other Super Saiyan category allies, um, you know, on rotation, he's getting an extra 14% per key sphere obtained. Like, it, he's turning those Super Saiyan category allies into support units, and that's something that's like insanely powerful. So I feel like, you know, along with the categories, length, like everything this guy's doing, his his leader skill, the Super Saiyan category, key plus four, 130 across the board. Like, honestly, that's one of the better teams in the game, I would argue, at this point. Um, but yeah, he, he's he's really good, and he's gonna he's also going to age insanely well because of the fact that of the the orb changing too. So like you can just float him, and he's he's always gonna be relevant. Yep. Yeah. Um, like one thing that is unrelated to the tier list, would you rather run two uh, Super Saiyan Spirit Bomb Gokus on the team as the lead instead of the Namek Goku? Yes, oh, I would easily. because. Like I'm talking about, like I was saying earlier, you could literally just run a full LR team with this guy as, as the leader. And you could have two of this guy floating around. He's creating the orbs. You have the uh, uh, the three-year, you know, Gogeta, the three-year Vegeta, who both get extra key from Rainbow mm -hmm. Key Sphere. Like, it, it's it's very seamless. It, it actually works very well. Mm -hmm. Yep, 100%. Okay, yeah. And, uh, yeah, one thing I would add, uh, like, Goresh is fried with everything. Uh, and the utility he brings to the table like when he came out extreme sword bad road for super agl like it's not a joke it's the hardest stage probably uh all of all of the esbr stages but he helps so much on the stage um that that's a factor for me too and yeah i, I love this unit i i i got him with with golden coins and i thought this but well i still think it's it's worth it so um yeah yeah i mean imagine a rotation on the super saiyan category of the str goku and vegeta alongside the int super like the int uh goku and vegeta from the year three and then this guy is in slot three like oh, yeah. you're gonna get like 18 keys with all of them very easily yeah right right that's thanks to him right yep that's why he is so high on the list and i think it's well 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 deserved so um yeah let's move on to the next one i will take this one first um l r u i goku at number five um yeah his banner kicked off my quote unquote youtube career and i pulled three of him in 400 stones so um yeah he has a special place in my heart this guy is crazy but i think in the community there are like two groups like the the one side really is hating him because he never dodges for him for them and the other side loves him and i i truly love him because the great chance to dodge for this first seven turns i believe uh, is still amazing like 70 percent that's that's quite a lot and he builds up attack and defense and key with that um like he he was number one for me at one point he's not anymore but man 
this guy looks so good everywhere. Uh, in longer events, when he's fully built up, he's doing fine. He disables enemies guard, so you're fine against uh, AGL units. I don't have much to complain, um, really. He's number five for me. Yeah, I think the only complaint that I would really have about him is the fact that if you're not going to get a million dodges like right away, he can hit a little bit soft to start out. Mm -hmm. um, compared to, you know, obviously he's number five, like literally on our, like all time, like best unit or whatever on our list for 2020. Um, so he's obviously insanely good. But when you compare him to the units we're going to talk about after him, I feel like that's what separates them from this UI Goku. Oh, yeah. Not not defensively, because it's hard to top this guy defensively, but it's just like, in terms of offensive firepower, that's where I feel like he maybe lacks a little bit behind the other units. So, yeah. uh, links are very good, categories are very good, stats are good, like, leader skill, like, Realm of Gods, like, it's just, it, this guy can do pretty much everything. One so. thing to remember about this guy, now, I, this isn't relevant for our tier list, because this is, you know, best units of 2020. But it looks like the six year anniversary LR is going to be mastered UI Goku, who, if you look at him, he's probably going to have the exact same link set. So you could run the two yep. of these guys together with seven links active. Yep. That is going to be <laughs> but like if the if the six year anniversary is actually just standalone mastered UI Goku and you run those two as a rotation, full seven links, that is just going to be like the God rotation. Like you can't beat that. Yeah, plus this guy might bring the first ever full refund for a banner on Global, which is <laughs> into our placement as well. Yeah, <laughs> of course, yes. Extra bonus points for that. So, um, yeah, one, one thing before I go uh, to number four. So, yeah, what separates him from the others, uh, like from, from one to four, is consistency. Like, the first four are really, really consistent. And number five, uh, UI Goku requires a bit of RNG. Like, if he never dodges for you, of course he's not that great, but... Um, yeah, seventy percent chance for me. It's 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 good, good enough. Um. So uh, yeah, let's move yeah. on to number four. I save this guy for truth. Um. Because I know he <laughs> he really likes him. So let's talk about Jiren. Yeah. So LR Jiren, just very good. Good link set. You know, all these turn of power characters, their links work really well together. They all work great together. Like Jiren. You know, Blue Goku and Vegeta, Blue Power and Goku, you know, UI Goku. They all have three, four links together. They're all getting a huge amount of key from Turner of Power. And then Jiren just comes out the gate 200% attack and defense on an LR unit where he's got, you know, 21,000 attack and over 14,000 defense, right? It just makes him so powerful. Um, I do always really like the key mechanic of getting key for every time they're hit. I think that's a good key mechanic for an LR especially when like Jiren, who you want in slot one and has that big defense to be able to take that punishment as well. So it's not really like a drawback where he has to get hit, but he's like a, a glass cannon or something like that. Um, the only sort of like the one sort of downside to Jiren, and this is the reason I sort of have the guy who's in front of him, Turles, in front of him, is that to me, like Jiren you do want like a specific unit with him like he, he is very tied to universe 11 right you have god topo or the topo slash pride troopers you get them on rotation with jiren and you're able to get him super effective against all types of the five plus million mm -hmm. attacks at mm -hmm. turn one which is just so crazy um and then when you're talking about him in like super battle road or something like that like you know he's got the stun chance on his 18 key super attack you know he does guaranteed crits on stun enemies all very valuable now, the one thing, though, is his active skill, you know, it, it sounds so good on paper. Like, he received damage five times and guaranteed stuns, 30% attack buff, right? So good. But, like, that does take a long time to happen, i found, always, is getting hit five times. You'd think, like, oh, turn one super battle out every single time, but it just never seems to work out that way, right? Where you just instantly get it, so... Yeah, I would say one of the reasons for that is he's so powerful that he destroys the unit who attacks in front of him every time, so you never get <laughs> <laughs> never get it as often. That's like my personal experience. Um, Damn, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, I, I have him at 79% um, uh, in my account. And yeah, as a speedrunner, I just love this unit. He turns Super Bad Road inside out. Like... Mm -hmm. You have him, and you can speed through all the, all the levels, like uh, all three fights. It's it's ridiculous. This this man is uh, is crazy. And one thing, um, 
Like in the past, I had him behind UI Goku, but now he got the Space Traveling Warriors category from Bojack. And that increased his value a little bit because you can yeah. uh, use him with Topo in one rotation and Bojack's team. Like Bojack just floats, floats around, he's in the third slot. And yeah, that's why uh, that's why his value is a little bit higher for me personally uh, than UA Goku's. But um, yeah, what, what are yeah, your thoughts? That, that, Question. that space traveling warrior team, like Jiren and one of the Topos and then Turles and another Turles on the other rotation is just devastating. It's so great. Yeah. Okay, uh, any any final thoughts from you, Goresh? Uh, even though you're on global, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I haven't had the chance to use Jiren, but I mean, I've obviously seen a lot of uh, footage of him doing things turn one, as many people like to say. You know, <laughs> Jiren turn one, that's what people like to call him. <laughs> yep. But, you know, I, there's not really much else to add. He's just a very, very hard hitting unit turn one with like 240k defense or something. Like, <laughs> yep, right. Again, I think the only downside is what uh, Truth mentioned earlier with his active skill conditions. Because it seems like something, like, if you looked at the conditions just straight up, you're like, oh, that's pretty easy to activate in Street Battle. I'll just hit five times turn one, then turn three, I'll be able to activate it. It doesn't usually work that way. So I feel like it's a little bit deceptive before you actually use him in practice. But um, if you can get that active skill off, like, you win. <laughs> Turns yeah. out the, the fight's over. Like, because you stun them all, and then you just kill everyone. Right, so, right. Uh, that's, it's powerful, but it does deceptively take a little bit longer to activate than you would think. Okay, so let's move on to number three, and I want Goresh to pick this one, and you will see yeah. why I say that at the end of this video. So, Ella Turles at number three, Truth already teased it. Um, so yeah, here we go, Goresh. Yeah, so I think when this unit was revealed, I, I, ha I don't think I was this impressed with a kit since, like, Physical Vegito Blue got his easy A or something. Like, this guy... Uh, the definition of literally no weakness, the only nitpick you could even possibly have is his active skill conditions. Like, that's it. Because the active skill, I think it's 60% or less HP or eight turns or after. Um, yep. And you can activate it twice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which, it doesn't sound as... Like, you, you compare this to, like, the, the Super Saiyan Blue Kaioken Goku and Evolution Blue Vegeta LR we talked about earlier. And this guy actually has better conditions than they do. Um, and I would argue he gets a better effect <laughs> than they do too um because the 24 key activates that the ridiculous portion of his passive um but i mean the fact that he is a support unit like if he okay l l let me put it this way if he didn't have that supporting part of his passive he would still be like a top five lr i would argue that mm -hmm. yeah um he doesn't need that to be good and i feel like the only reason why they even gave him that was because he was turless and people probably wouldn't summon for him if he wasn't this ridiculous but his his links like big bad bosses his categories like the, his, the terrifying conquerors category has just gotten so much ridiculous characters in it since like a year ago like turles cooler yeah you know, now you have bojack in there you have uh the link level update made like super baby 2 like ridiculously powerful um all these units that are releasing are a lot of them a lot of the villain units are all in this category and we're gonna eventually get way more like when demon king piccolo gets a dokkan fest or when these other characters get a dokkan fest too like it's just going to continue getting more ridiculous and this guy's going to be on every single like you run this guy on any team he's, he belongs on movie bosses join forces terrifying conquerors final trump card space traveling warriors all those categories you you this, the first unit i'm putting on all those teams is this guy yeah yep, um right. it, it's just like he doesn't even need half of his passive to be like the best unit <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking when they made him, but he's like the bot. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, I I'll just leave, I'll just tell you guys right now. I had him at number one. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was very easy to put Turles in front of Jiren on my list because of the space traveling warrior team, where it's just like you can kind of create an environment that's literally perfect for both Jiren and Turles at the same time, and Turles is just better. Like, he's just stronger because Jiren, like, does all this craziness and stuff like that. But if you're able to get the 24 key for Turles and he's doing two super attacks, like, super effective against all types of the two chances to stun and shit, it's just, it's too, it's too much. It's like, he's so ridiculous. Like, a high chance, because Jiren has a medium chance of stunning an 18 key. Turles has a high chance of stunning, right? Like, there's a couple of things you can go down the list with them and point that out. You know, Turles is a big bad bosses unit. Big bad bosses is probably the best link in the game. You know, you keep going. There's a lot of stuff like that. 
Yeah, and uh, one thing that yeah, um, brings me joy, I have to say, he resurrected, in my opinion, the AGL Turles, who is my favorite Dokkan Fest exclusive of, of all time. Um, well, you don't want Turles to transform, uh, or well, to eat the tr fruit of Tree of Might, but when he is transformed at Rainbow and level 10 links, he, he gets a, like a 200k defensive stat. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Like, yeah. I never dreamt of that before the release of this LR, um, but... Uh, and it's healing uh, every yeah. turn. Too. Right, right. So this rotation... Uh, sorry, Sunblade. I uh, I tend to go with the T-Worm myself. Um, <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you want to run the LR and the TOR of the LR Turles in one rotation, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. for, like, the, the normal models, like, who are not the gods, like... I have to rely on AGL Turles and yeah, I love love running him now again. Um, he's he's great on this rotation. Uh, every link except one gets activated for the LR Turles and yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah, I like uh, I like going into turn one. He's at 300k defense. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Pretty good. Okay, so let's move on to number two, and I guess uh, you know who it is. It is LR Superboo Gotenks Absorbed. Um, yeah, Goresh. You can take this one too, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so I had this guy above Vegito. Um, I think I was the only person who had that. I. Yep. It's very close, right? The, uh, I feel like most people would have Vegito above this guy. To me, this guy feels more consistent. Um, but when you talk about consistency, I feel like that's the reason why they're both like neck and neck, like so high up here. Uh, it's the key passive. Um, as long as, as well as their links and their categories, because this guy, I mean, talk about like transformation conditions that are easy to get. This is like an auto transformation, right? Uh, he's the ceiling is really the only downside I would say, because when you talk about like, oh, Vegito versus Bu like Buhan, who's the better unit? I think Vegito easily is better than Buhan, but it's much easier to get the Buhan transformation than it is for Vegito. Yeah, right. Uh, and then likewise, you know, to, to play along with that. Vegito does get the better sort of like extra effect with the seeing super attacks for 10 turns. I think it's 10, 8 or 10 yeah, or whatever. It's, it's 10. That For yeah. me, that's sort of like the big, di like that's the the biggest difference between them, I think, is that that five turn seal, like you have to be hard pressed to find a situation where that's going to matter whatsoever. Like yeah. you're going to get him, like it's only super battle road. And most of these fights, it's literally going to last for like a turn or two. Like funny enough, they did release a stage directly after this boo came out. Uh, the Majin Buu Extreme Super Battle Road category stage, where that Vegito you fight in there is probably the hardest enemy in the game. And you can get, you know, up to turn 8, up to turn 9, so where that 5 turn seal can sort of be effective. But Vegito, seeing super attacks for 10 turns, it's just amazing everywhere. You transform yeah. with him, you have that out, it's god mode. Like, it's crazy. The one reason why I do like... Uh, the boo a little better than Vegito. I think we d we did all like I said earlier many times throughout this video is that we factor Super Battle Road as the most important thing when deciding mm -hmm. the order here. But I feel like it's so close between the boo and the Vegito that I really did think about like what they're able to do outside of Super Battle Road as well. And I think you could argue that Vegito probably has the best, if one of the best, if not the best leader skills in the game. But I think Buhan does completely just obliterate Vegito when it comes to long event. Like when Infant yeah. Dragon Ball History and Legendary Goku event, like because he's he stacks defense and he stacks and he stacks attack too prior to transforming. Yep. He's better than Vegito in long events. And I feel like that was the main driving factor behind me putting him above Vegito. But I think if you're just comparing the transformed versions to each other, Vegito's like okay, he's just like destroying everyone. So the <laughs> only thing the only thing about the transform version of Vegito though is that He's not as good defensively as, like, you would like for a character that you want. Like, because you want him to get hit 50 times, so he's countering 50 yep. times. And against the toughest enemies, he can get slapped, including the Majin Buu Extreme Categories for Battle Road Stage, which, again, that's, like, maybe one of the hardest stages in the game, so performance in there really matters extra to me. And, like, they literally built the stage that Vegito couldn't solo it by himself because they made that Vegito boss in their AGL. Obviously, to counter that yep, SDR right. Vegito. 100%. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so let's move on to the final slot here. First place, best card in the game, in my opinion, but I let the Allah King Truth speak here. SDR, Goku, and Vegeta at number one. Go ahead. 
So to me, the reason, like, I, I think this is the best unit in the game for Super Battle Royale. Like, there's just, because, like, you know, you could say something like, oh, I love Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta, right? But, like, you can have a lot of, like, team builds and stuff like that where he'll struggle for key. You know, he gets a super attack off and he's barely hurting the enemy. You know, so if he doesn't get a stun, he's not doing anything. But Goku and Vegeta, their defense is so high. And then they have the damage reduction. Then they're raising defense on super attack, right? They have the ability to do an additional super. They're, they have the ridiculously OP mechanic of extra key per orb. It's just like, they're so good in Super Battle Road. They, like, any stage they're on becomes a joke. Like, even what is clearly designed to be one of the hardest stages by far is just the the super class stage in extreme super battle right like mm -hmm. it everything is dialed to infinity in there and it's like i went in there and i know item that the second try thanks to goku and vegeta tech ultimate gohan some of these ridiculous Buu saga units you know just running goku and vegeta as a leader you know go look at some of these no item super battle Road runs people are doing final trump card super saiyan Boo Saga, like literally every category they're on, you run two of these guys and you're just cream pieing the Super Battle Road stage. Like the, the stage has no chance. It has no chance of killing this Goku and Vegeta unit. Yep. None whatsoever. Yep. And then, you know, yeah, turn four to transform is not that bad, but you do have the HP restriction. But like in Super Battle Road, turn four, 77% or less, you get that every time when you're in one of these tough Super Battle Road stages. So like, then it's like you're healing right at the end. If they're just so good for Super Battle Road that I, I have them as one. And it's like, you have the Vegito aspect, but like, I like them as number one. And a lot of it isn't even related to the Vegito part. <laughs> That's what's yep, funny. Right, right. Yeah. Go ahead, Gorsh. No, I was just going to say, I agree with a lot of what he said. Um, I think Boo Tanks, because we're always going to compare both of them because it's just, they released at the same time. And everyone's like, oh, who's better, blah, blah, blah. Um, but I think it's sort of like the same thing with Tanks too, because he's single-handedly tanking everything. He's like killing everyone by himself. Like, blah, blah. like you could say the same thing about Tanks. But I think the one thing I would really give the edge to, to the uh, Goku and Vegeta, is their leader skill. Like, I, yeah. we've been waiting for a Majin Buu Saga leader, like a true leader, for a long time. And not only is he that, he's also the Battle of Woods leader. Like, if you actually take a look at the roster of the Battle of Woods team, and you combine that with the Majin Buu Saga, which is already like one of the biggest categories. Like, it's like the best team in the game easily. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have like, you know, one really big dark horse on that Battle Wits team is like Demon Goddess Toa, right? She's got that a crazy heal. She's an all type support. Like, you put her as a floater on there, and that's just like the team is just it, it's it's crazy. It, it's it, I agree that it's the best like leader skill combo or team or whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. So yeah, one thing that stuck in my head was uh, one of Goresh's videos where he said like he's basically a fan made card. He does everything. <laughs> he has the best leader skill. He raises attack and defense for one turn, combined with 120% defense uh, on his passive, 30% damage reduction, plus one key for every type keys you obtain. Like, what is this? I actually don't want to want him to transform. He's already like extremely overpowered uh, from my point of view and yeah for me it's 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 not even close he, he is definitely number one for me he does everything and, and it will be hard for Akatsuki to top him but uh, yeah the the anniversary for JP Dogan is right around the corner so <laughs> yeah one thing I do want to add real quick about him too is we mentioned earlier that like you know the transform Vegito might not be the best unit defensively but I feel like that uh, super attack, you know, where like the, the ability to see super attacks, that is a pseudo defensive utility mm -hmm. for you, yep. for your team. Yep. And I, I personally feel like that more than makes up for the fact that he's a little bit fragile because you can literally just put him in a place where you know he's not going to be super, right? Yep, right. Um, and then the same goes for allies. Like on the other rotation, he's affecting the other rotations while he's not even on rotation. Yeah, which is something that's like you never see that. Yeah, to be fair, I I absolutely forgot about that um, because I never transform him. <laughs> He's already that good. Mm -hmm. But yeah, ten turns, man, that's a lot. So um, yeah. Okay, yeah, there you have it. Um, our top ten for the best LRs in Dokkan released in 2020, regardless of their version. Yeah, we looked at them at their full potential, rainbowed. And yeah, I think this is a pretty good tier list. I feel pretty good about this one. Any closing comments from you guys? Yeah, I'm I'm pretty comfortable with this. 
right? Like it's these are yep. probably like the you know the ten best units in the game or something like that. Like mm -hmm. I don't know, like maybe in twenty nine, like you can slide like Kale and Cleveland here some somewhere maybe or something like that. But like these units here are the cream of the crop right now for like, the game. Tech Broly and like Goku and Frieza maybe could fit on here. Yeah. Um. Yeah. But yeah, I was gonna say like I feel like Truth and Sunblade's tier list were like literally almost one for one. Yeah, I think. Uh... I th yeah, I was gonna say I think mine is a little different, but mm -hmm. it's still relatively the yeah. same, right? Yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, you see it on the screen right now. Like, he, and and Truth told me that he didn't copy my tier list. Uh, I did mine before his. So no, I, <laughs> yeah, we, we all we all I, did I was it. In... We, all, we all did it without looking at each other's tier list. Yeah. Like it was literally just individual. Yeah. Yeah, like I was I was in call with Garash and I was like, okay, wait, wait, don't don't tell me yours. I'm not gonna look at somebody's. I'm gonna make mine. And then it's like the same. Thing. <laughs> Yeah, that proves pretty much that, um, yeah, we know what you're, what we're doing. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys in the comment section uh, agree with us. If you are not, please let us know in the comment section what would you change, why. And, um, yeah, that pretty much covers the tier list. Thank you so much for tuning in. Stay tuned for uh, upcoming videos from 5.9 Gaming. A lot is, a lot is um, yeah, in the pipeline and the anniversary is coming up. So, um, yeah, a lot of content will be pumped out by us and um, yeah stay home stay safe and we will see you guys very soon bye bye